you had a question you wanted to ask him. Yes, I, I was curious to know whether uh, the producer or the uh, A&R man, as we'd call him today, uh, uh, requested you to sing in any particular key uh, with the view in mind, perhaps, of competing with uh, some other singer that your uh, record company wanted to compete with. Uh, uh, I mentioned that Seeger Ellis had that problem in trying to compete with uh, Gene Austin. No, I didn't. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know how to state the reason for my uh, having done so many records other than the fact that no special arrangement was required because I could sing in the original key of the song as it was written by the writer and as published by the publishing company. And uh, in a lot of instances, other singers had to have things transposed into the key that was suitable for their voice. But I was fortunate in having a very wide range, not too good low and not too good high, but it covered practically all of the uh, the range of all the popular songs. So for that reason, uh, if they had something that was a little difficult, I got into that mess too a couple of times. Yeah. Once with Victor Young, uh, with a Franz Lehar number that uh, was a little beyond my scope, but he didn't think so, and he made me do it, and it turned out fairly well. But that's the real reason. I see. Uh, Smith Rhodes asked me a question the other day when we was talking about you. Uh, and I want him to uh, ask you now. I told him we would when you got down here. It was the circumstances surrounding uh, the Ellington recording. He was wondering. I was wondering uh, why you uh, made the, uh, or well, you had the vocal on the uh, uh, two sides that you cut with them. Uh, I just would like to know the circumstances of how you and the ba and the Ellington band got together on that date. Well, that's very simple. Uh, I uh, kept a record at home of all my dates. I mean, I had uh, calls constantly from all companies and I never was concerned with whom they were to be with or who, what bands were concerned it didn't make any difference I just knew that I had a date on such and such a day at such and such a studio it's, uh, and I simply appeared and when I appeared at Victor that morning of course I knew the recording master very well I walked by Studio A and looked in and I said well this can't be where I'm going to work because a bunch of colored guys in there. Mm -hmm. Must say colored today. Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, they must have given me the wrong studio number. So I went up to the main office and talked to the recording master, and I said, where am I supposed to work? And he said, in Studio A, I'll take you down there. Mm -hmm. So we walked down there, and sure enough, that's what it was. Yeah. I had no idea who I was going to work with. I see. At the well, time the date was made. What we was wondering, Smith, did your agent uh, make arrangements with the date, probably with Irving Mills, who was managing Ellington? Is that why? That, uh, no, Irving Mills called my house and made the date. And my wife put the date in the date book. Oh. And I simply, I was too busy at night. I was <coughs> working constantly. I didn't pay any attention to who the date might be. I simply appeared at the time that I was asked uh, to be there. Well, we were curious about how a band would go about getting a, a vocalist that had never worked with the band before to cut a record with them, see? Well, they didn't always uh, suggest anyone in particular. Depended on the studio they were working in, and the recording master would usually say, we'll put Scrappy Lambert on this oh. or Smith Ballou or somebody else. Oh, that's how. And they decide that, and I would get my call, and I'd simply go. 
and he'd tell Ellington that we've got oh, the blue coming down yeah. to, for the vote. Uh-huh. Sure. That's what we was wondering about. Oh, that's what, what would happened. be. Uh, what would the arrangement be financial, financially uh, on that? Would you get a flat fee, or would you ride on the royalty of the record? No. In that day and time, there was no royalty contracts, really. Possibly uh, some of the old-timers had royalty contracts who had a standard uh, quantity of sales. Otherwise, they wouldn't make any money. Because this was during the period, as you know, that radio made terrific inroads into records, and uh, records did not come back until about 1936 when they had the jukeboxes. So you had to be paid a reasonable amount for your services uh, for that one service. And, and you would generally record. make more that way in the end than you would if you'd been on a royalty basis because it didn't sell that many records at yes. that time. But if a record happened to sell... Oh, that's something else. If it did, you wouldn't get any no. more. No, you'd get no more. But, but they paid you well. But at the same time, it'd make you more in demand. That's true. Yeah. Are you ready? Well, if you... Well, what are we going to do now? If you've got a royalty from all those records, you, uh, you probably wouldn't be alive now, Smith. No, I probably, probably wouldn't. Dinner is served. <laughs> Lived it up. Oh, it is. What's that? Yes, dinner is served. Well, dinner is served. Right There's no more records at the moment, I'll tell you that. <laughs> We're late. <right. laughs> Louise? I'll be right back. I'm going Uh, Smith, looks like we've got some company after this nice dinner we had. I wonder if you'd introduce uh, our company. Oh, with well, pleasure. I particularly should like to introduce, first of all, Louise. And uh, we want you to say something about it. Well, she hasn't had a chance to I'm not, I haven't see what we're doing. I haven't gotten up yet. You haven't gotten more <laughs> done. No, well, I don't Louise. quite know what to say. By the way, Mrs. That's Baker. The of, that's the title of your first record, isn't it, Louise? Or one of them. Oh, did you make Louise? You made Louise. A la Marie Pollock. Chevalier. She. Uh-huh. We, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, and then we have uh, Mary. This is the Lou. How do you do? Well, I'm delighted to be here and to hear about the record business. I didn't know it was so tremendous. I didn't either. If they fool me, I promise you. Well, Smith, we're going to play the girls' records here. Uh, uh, it's a vocal with the orchestra accompaniment, and whose orchestra is, uh, you might listen to the record and have some idea. The name of it is My Fate is in Your Hands, and I'll Close My Eyes. Oh, my goodness. What terrific titles. It must be great. <laughs> See if you recognize any music. Yes, I know them all. Probably they're the same ones that we use for solo records. It's just uh, Smith. Pleasure for our trumpet. You must uh, have been getting big then because they just put you down as a vocalist, no orchestra. No. Yes, well, this is a solo record for yeah. which I received, for your benefit, a thousand dollars a side. Hmm. And I made three sides of a sitting. Royalty, Smith? No, no royalty. Let's hear it, Harvey. What do you assure me? What is 
sides here uh, uh, the same type that we just threw playing. Uh, that contract you had was okay, I suppose. Yes, you, yes. You made quite a few sides with them. Yes, indeed I did. Solos, you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, with the studio uh, oh, orchestra sure. company. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we won't uh, uh, no use giving these titles because the titles are on the record, naturally. That's right. And we'll just uh, put all of them on that we've got here. Okay. okay. I think that's a good idea. About Twelve sides. I'm afraid it'll get a little bit tiring because of the slow tempo. Of the well, if you get tired, you can take a walk. Mary and I'll sit and listen to them. Okay. <laughs> Delicate moon over the silent lane Lighten the dark, show me the answer plain Here in my breast wakens my heart When will it rest, oh why does it start Delicate moon what is this lovely pain for? Oh, how am I to know if it's really love that found its way here? Oh, how am I to know? Will it linger on and leave me? The strange happiness for oh, how am I to know? Can it be that love has come to stay? Thank you. 
This must have been a possible time in your career. Well, it was. I didn't even know how much I was making. I didn't care, really. I was just busy working and well, did, you, collect. Did, did you have your orchestra at this time, or did oh, you just... Oh, sure. No, I had the orchestra, too. This was outside of the orchestra work. Oh, you was busy. Yeah. 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 How many sides would you usually cut it? Oh, uh, solos were three sides. Three sides yeah. at a time. At a, at a session, a three-hour session. Well, these are good, and we enjoy them. Well, I'm glad. Darkness 
Malatone? You're on the air. Yeah. Uh, we had... Uh, I think we recorded this down at uh, Olin's house. Howard, would you like to record it and put it on this tape? Uh, Smith? Smith? Let's go ahead and put it on here. All right. Okay. Uh, this is a... This is a... This is a... Uh, Malatone... Uh, Smith Ballou and his orchestra of the Champagne Wall. Yes, and I think we recorded it on a tempo. Well, it's pretty, and it might be a better copy. Let's put All it right. on. All right, fine. The flip well, side is Play to Me Gypsy. Yes, I uh, think I recall that we recorded this at Temple. We've got it on tape already, but uh, if you wish, we'll put it on this Let's put it on again. Smith, here's a, uh, my pan of Troubadours record on Columbia with Sam Lannon, the director. You probably remember that he directed the many uh, uh, orchestra. Thank you for the coffee, Louise. Oh, yes. <laughs> I tried. Word. We tried to get it. <laughs> we tried. You remember Sam Lannon? Oh, very well. And I played, I think I'm playing like banjo on this record. I'm not certain. Well, you probably are, because uh, if I understand right, Sam was a man who liked to save money, and uh, uh, he would uh, do that. The title, My Strongest Weakness, is you. Well, now, wait a minute. If this is the one I'm thinking of, there's a little story back of it. Uh, we were, Sam was playing at the, uh, not the Steel Pier, what's the other one in Atlantic City? I think. Uh, oh, don't you know? Uh, Next to the steel pier. Well, anyway, 
Sam was playing there. I was playing with him, and we spent one weekend driving to New York to make some records. And whether this is one, I'm not certain that this is the one, but it could be. And you think you played banjo? Oh, yes, I think I probably did. I probably don't know whether I can tell or not. I'll was try. You play, was you playing banjo at, uh, at Atlantic City with him? Oh, yes. You yeah. bet. You bet. Well, I did, the, the orchestra had Dorsey Brothers, and they had uh, Charlie Jondro, a drummer that killed himself later. They had, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, the original Memphis Five trumpet player. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Tell me quick. Uh, um, he was in the band, nevertheless. Quite a fine band, I'll tell you that. Excellent band. And then our one, uh, Phil Napoleon. Yes, Phil Napoleon. Phil Napoleon. Yeah. This may be it. Well, what, kind of, uh, what kind of fellow was Sam Lennon to work for? <laughs> Wonderful. I liked him very much, and he was quite interested in my career, and he gave me a lot of good information, a lot of good advice, really. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him on the beach talking about how I could make more money and what I could do to to better myself, and he, he just gave me a lot of good advice. Well, he, he good, was, sound businessman. He was responsible for a lot of recordings. Do you recall uh, this iPad of Troubadours now? Oh, yeah. Evidently, uh, there was an iPad of Toothpaste Radio Show, wasn't there? That's exactly where he uh, carried the name from that show that he had for quite some time. Now, I wasn't on that show with him. I didn't play with him then. Evidently, he knew more about music than Ed Kirkby. Oh, there's no question about it. He was a good musician. I don't know what instrument he played. Uh, of course, he conducted, and I, I, I just don't know what he played. I believe he played the clarinet, though. I'm not sure. Was uh, How was Tommy and uh, Jimmy Dorsey uh, uh, along that period? They were wild as bucks, both of them, and when we went up to... Uh, uh, to New York to do these recordings on that weekend. They spent most of the time smoking marijuana. <laughs> and I tried it. And I thought I might as well try and see what it was like. It never did a thing to me. I didn't know how to use it. I didn't... In other words, it didn't... didn't uh, send you. No, it didn't send me at all. Well, you was lucky. Yeah. yeah. So still... that's the story of this record now, if it is the record. <laughs> well, if it's not, it's... Uh, uh the same story that other records like it that you made with Sam Lennon. Cool. Uh, let's hear this uh, I Pan of Troubadours recording. <laughs>
Smith, now that you've heard that recording, uh, do you recognize any of the musicians, especially the banjo player? Well, yeah, I, was, I think that was me. It sounded kind of like my little old strumming that I did many strums through the years. And I particularly like Tommy's little passage and also Phil Napoleon's. Not to mention, not to mention uh, uh, Arthur Shutt. Arthur Shutt Shutt on the piano was terrific. I didn't know that he had a a drinking problem until you told me down there at Temple. Oh, yes, he he went from worse to worse to worse. You couldn't imagine. Now, Pax Waller drank a lot, but evidently he uh, could uh, handle his, couldn't he? Or uh, didn't, uh, uh, he never was... uh, no, uh, uh, Arthur Shutt was a terrifically uh, emotional person. That's why he played such marvelous piano. Was he a moody? Uh, oh, extremely moody. Extremely moody. That's Pass what wasn't. And the, uh, no, just, uh, he, anything was, would go with him. Uh, he didn't bother didn't him. Know. Well, we come to another Ted Wallace recording now on uh, Columbia, which... Uh, it was Ed Kirkby. Do you recall those two signs? <laughs> oh, Sweetheart's Holiday. Yes, I kind of remember that. This might be a trio, I'm not sure. Because he used a trio a lot, in, uh, which I sang the melody, of course. Huggable, kissable, you on the flip. Well, I don't really recall. Let's play them and see, and if it's not you, uh, uh, it was probably Ted Wallace trying to sing. <laughs> but uh, let's put it on there, because it brings back memories all the time. Yeah, I, I think I remember Sweetheart's Holiday. All right, let's play it. Mm-hmm. 